Want to know the best way to show off your work, impress future clients, blow your competition out of the water, and make more sales? Well, keep watching to learn my fail-proof nine-step formula for writing the perfect case study. Hey Posse, what's up? It's Alex. If you're new to the crew, welcome. This channel is here to teach you the ins and outs of all things marketing, from learning how to write better social media captions, to crafting emails that generate mad clicks and serious sales, to mastering the key components of an effective sales funnel, and everything in between. So if you're looking to learn more about copywriting and online marketing this year, then go ahead and hit subscribe below, and don't forget to tap that bell to be notified when my next video goes live. Now, it goes without saying that learning how to write powerful and compelling case studies is an invaluable skill for all copywriters to have. Case studies can take the form of emails that you send to your list, articles on your blog, or even stories on a sales page or website. Not only do case studies help you land better and higher paying clients by showcasing the amazing results that you've gotten for your clients, but it also helps you land more clients who are looking to hire a copywriter to create strong case studies for them and their business. So before we dive into the nine part formula, let's quickly touch on what a case study actually is and how it differs from just a regular client testimonial. So a case study is a compelling story-based article that showcases how you solve a specific problem for your customer. A well-written case study will be engaging. It will take your reader on a journey with a beginning, middle, and an end. Whereas a simple testimonial is a word-for-word -word review of your product or service that comes from a satisfied customer. And don't get me wrong, testimonials are great and even necessary to showcase your authority and social proof in your business. But trust me, they are not as powerful powerful or as effective at closing sales as a really well-written case study. And that's because when done correctly, case studies are more about the client's journey and transformation rather than you just saying, hey, look how awesome my product or service is. Look at these great things that people say about it, which like I said before, is great. But when the story is about someone else and what they actually went through, it's way more relatable, it's more authentic, and it's more effective. So with all that said, let's get into it. Here is my nine step formula for crafting the perfect case study. So step number one, you gotta interview the client. Yep, I said interview. Not send them a survey, not ask them to leave a detailed review, not please write about your experience. If you wanna get the type of juicy takeaways and information that will turn into a great case study, then you really, really need to interview your client or customer. Why? Because it allows you to dig a little deeper, right? You can say, oh, tell me more about that. Or how did you feel when that happened? Or where were you right before you decided to start working with me? For example, I just found out that one of my rainmakers used to be a garbage man. <laughs> he never mentioned that in a testimonial before because, well, it just didn't seem relevant. But just imagine the amazing story that I can tell about how we went from hauling trash to hauling in thousands of dollars a month writing for eight-figure entrepreneurs while spending time with his family and traveling the world. Yeah, you get it. Now, one thing you need to make sure to avoid when you're doing your interview is asking yes or no questions. You really wanna focus on open-ended questions that allow your client to really share their entire story. You wanna dig into what they were feeling and experiencing before your product or service, what they felt or experienced during the process and during the transformation, and finally what they experienced after your product or service, including the specific results they got. Your job is simply to listen and then ask leading questions that really pull out those great stories and specific details. Now here's a pro tip, make sure to record this call with permission, of course, to save you from you know jotting down notes or trying to type to remember every single detail. A lot of the great little tidbits are in the nuances and the things that you might not think of writing down. And once the interview is done, I highly recommend you transcribe that interview. And then that's really when the fun starts, when you can start writing your case study, which of course starts with step number two, write a benefit focused headline. So just like anything else you write, crafting a powerful hook and headline is the most important part of any piece. It's the first thing your readers will see, and it's the single determining factor on whether or not someone reads the rest of that case study. So you wanna make sure your headline is strong enough to capture your audience's attention and draw them in to keep reading. Great case study headlines are often very benefit driven. Okay, so this isn't the place to get all fancy with a mysterious open loop or spark any sort of controversy. Instead, you just wanna focus on one really specific benefit or transformation that your client or customer achieved. And if you can include exact numbers or stats in your headline, that is a big bonus. So for example, 
From trash to cash, how a former garbage man built a six-figure copywriting business. Not bad, right? <laughs> All right, next up, step number three, introduce your customer. Okay, so now that you've hooked your reader's attention with an awesome headline, the next thing your case study needs to do is to introduce the client or customer you're featuring. Remember, this is all about them, not about you. With that being said, you still wanna keep this section relatively short. There's no reason to tell their whole life story here. You just wanna share who they are, what they do, how they do it, and what their day-to-day -day looked like before they found you. Now, once your readers have a general idea of the person and or company you're talking about, you can then move on to step number four, which is the before. So we all know this, nothing beats a good before and after story. So you wanna start by identifying the one big pain point that ultimately led them to you and your product or service. So this would be the aggravating, uncomfortable, or dissatisfying status quo that drove them to seek a solution, AKA you and your product or service. You can then go deeper into the challenges, struggles, and fears that this caused for your client, and this is where your storytelling can really start to come to life. You want the reader to relate to this story on an emotional level. So it's really important that you don't just list out a bunch of facts and stats. You want to go into how this actually affected them. Use feeling and emotion words as much as possible. Remember, facts tell and stories sell. All right, moving on to step number five, you are going to talk about the smart decision. You wanna highlight what was going on in your client's life in the moments right before they made the decision to work with you. What was the straw that broke the camel's back? What was the moment of truth where they said, okay, enough is enough, I need some support here. When you understand your client's state of mind directly before they purchased from you or hired you, this will give you so much valuable insight into the real reasons they said yes. Now, of course, this is when you can very naturally pivot to your product or solution, whatever it was that really helped your particular customer or client get results. Now, the goal here is to not start pitching or trying to sell your product like you would on a sales page. You still wanna keep it very conversational and remember, lead with storytelling. Next, you wanna find out specific reasons, step number six, why they chose you and more importantly, what other solutions they've tried in the past that didn't work and why they chose you over your competitors. So this is powerful positioning where you can really highlight your USP or why you're better, faster, different from the other guys. And the best part is it's not you talking about it. It's all coming directly from the perspective of your client in their own words. All right, now step number seven, the transformation. So now is where you can go into more detail and explain the transformation from start to finish, right? So you wanna to continue to take your reader on that journey. You wanna paint an accurate picture of what the process of working with you looked and felt like for your client. And this is another place where you can really tap into some great storytelling techniques. Remember, almost nothing goes 100% smoothly. The road to success can be bumpy and that's a good thing. Make sure to include all the low points and bumps that were encountered along the way, along with the wins and triumphs. This massively increases believability and trust with the reader. Now you wanna to move to step Step number eight, the after. And this is where you finally get to show off the amazing results that your customer received. But more than simply saying something generic like, her life was never the same again, you ideally want to include some tangible results and examples, and as much as possible, show the transformation your customer received. Demonstration is so, so, so powerful, even if it's done through storytelling. And remember, be as specific as possible. And lastly, step number nine, end with a powerful call to action. Of course, you always wanna end any case study with a CTA for your reader to follow. So maybe that's hopping on a call with you or submitting an inquiry form, or maybe it's even just clicking a link in an email to learn more or to buy your product or service. Whatever it is, make sure you tell your reader exactly what to do next. All right, Posse, there you have it. Nine steps for writing the perfect case study. Give me a thumbs up below if you found this one helpful, and I will be back next week with a brand new video. Until then, I'm Alex. Ciao for now. All right, guys, if you enjoyed that video, make sure to check out the next one from me right here. And you can click right here to get a free gift. What's the number one thing you can do right away to massively boost your credibility, increase your chances of landing new clients, and charge more for your services?